So next we'll look at an idealized greenhouse model uh, to understand what the impact of greenhouse gases and the atmosphere are on the surface temperature. So again we'll look at a representative daily averaged, seasonal averaged, spatially averaged surface that receives energy from the sun, namely incoming energy flux F in is our solar constant S, which is about 340 watts per meter squared. Now, not all of that gets absorbed by the surface, as we've learned, right? About 30% of this gets reflected. So that's alpha S, alpha being the albedo. Planetary albedo. Which is about 0.3. So 30% gets sent back out. And 70% gets absorbed by the surface. So this is 30% back out, 70% actually comes in. And that is 1 minus alpha times s, yeah? 0.7 times the solar constant. So that's the short wave story. Now the long wave story is that we are emitting long wave radiation and through Stefan Boltzmann we know that it is sigma ts to the 4. That's the energy that's going out which is proportional to the fourth power of the surface temperature. Yeah? F surface, this flux outward is sigma ts to the 4. Now, not everything is leaving the climate system because we actually have an atmosphere. And this atmosphere is absorbing some fraction of the sigma ts to the 4. And this fraction we call the absorbance, epsilon. So what goes into the atmosphere is epsilon sigma ts to the 4. And then what just travels through the atmosphere is 1 minus epsilon sigma ts to the 4. So here, epsilon is our atmospheric absorbance. And there's a law in physics called Kirchhoff's law, which tells us that for a body like the atmosphere, the absorptance is exactly the same as the emissivity. So the atmosphere absorbs radiation at the same rate as it emits energy. So epsilon could also be called the emissivity. Absorptance and emissivity are the same thing. And that is what's known as Kirchhoff's law. Now, the energy em emitted by the atmosphere goes in both directions. It goes down and out. So you have additional em energy coming back to the surface of the Earth. So, that would be epsilon, sigma, and now the flux is proportional to the temperature of the atmosphere, Ta to the 4. And that goes in both directions. And now we have all the ingredients we need to estimate what Ts would be. So, we'll take this framework that I've just shown here and turn it into equations. So we know that the flux into the atmosphere 
has to be the same as the flux out of the atmosphere. The flux into the atmosphere, as we've learned, is epsilon sigma ts to the 4. The flux out of the atmosphere is 2 times epsilon sigma ta to the 4. So this is the atmospheric story. Now, we can write a similar equation for the surface. Flux into the surface has to be the same as flux out of the surface. So what's coming in to the surface? Well, we know that the solar radiation is coming in, 1 minus alpha s, and this contribution from the energy that's emitted back to, this, to the Earth by the atmosphere. So flux in is 1 minus alpha times s plus epsilon sigma ta to the 4. And that has to be balanced by the flux out of the surface. Flux out of the surface is just this sigma ts to the 4. And what we want to find is ts. Now we can combine equations 1 and 2 and then solve for ts. Because right now we don't know what ta is, which is in here, but we can eliminate ta by this expression number 1. Because I can write from here, I know that epsilon sigma ta to the 4 is just a half epsilon sigma ts to the 4. And so I can plug this expression for epsilon, for epsilon sigma ta in to the equation down here. So when I do that, I get 1 minus alpha s plus a half epsilon sigma ts to the 4 is sigma ts to the 4. And in this equation, I know everything apart from the surface temperature. That's assuming I know alpha, I know the solar constant, I know the Stefan Boltzmann number, and the atmospheric emissivity. So, doing some algebra here, I can show that Ts is equal to 1 minus alpha times S divided by sigma 1 minus epsilon over 2 and the whole thing to a power of a quarter. Now, imagine that epsilon is zero. That means no absorptance by atmosphere. In that case, Ts is just 1 minus alpha times S divided by sigma to a quarter, which is the equation that we found previously for a black body with albedo alpha and no atmosphere. So this would be the 255 Kelvin that we've derived previously. And this is sometimes defined to be TE, the effective emission temperature. 
with this definition of Te, we can write our surface temperature as Te times a multiplying factor that accounts for the atmosphere. So we can write Ts is equal to Te times 1 over 1 minus epsilon over 2 to a quarter. Make sure you see where this comes from by comparing these two equations. Now, if you have a complete absorptance, which would be a sometimes called a perfect greenhouse, epsilon would be 1. And we call that complete absorption or also known as a perfect greenhouse. In that case, Ts just becomes 2 to a quarter times Te, which is roughly 1.2 Te. And 1.2 Te, if you plug in 255 for the effective emission temperature, you'll find this is 303 Kelvin, which corresponds to about 30 degrees Celsius. And this is um, actually worked out as an example in the book. So this gives you an idea of how the greenhouse effect modulates the temperature at the surface of the Earth. Now, we'll consider a couple of cases. The question is, what is emissivity in the atmosphere? Well, for the modern climate, it's been found that epsilon is about 0 0.78. If you plug that into your equation, you'll find that Ts is roughly 1.13 times Te, which corresponds to 288.3 Kelvin. In a hotter climate, and I'm using a bright red color here, say if we double CO2, this corresponds to a radiative forcing change of about 4 watts per meter squared. And it changes the emissivity or the absorptance of the atmosphere by about 0 0.02. That means that the emissivity for a doubling of CO2 is about 0 0.8. So if we doubled CO2, Ts would become 289.5 Kelvin. So, a global warming signal of about 1.2 Kelvin. And the question is, is this going to be our future climate? And unfortunately, this is not the whole story. Because it's so simplified, and we're ignoring a whole bunch of feedbacks in the climate system. For example, the warmer your atmosphere, the moister it becomes. The warmer your atmosphere, the more moist it becomes, and it can absorb more energy and will lead to additional, the clouds and other effects will lead to additional heating.
with feedbacks we are estimating that a doubling of CO2 will actually lead to about a change of delta epsilon of about 0.04 which gives you a global warming of about 2.4 Kelvin. This is from just very idealized modeling considerations. If you run a fully resolving, very complicated global climate model that accounts for all the effects that come with increasing greenhouse gases, um, the IPCC, which is the International Panel of Climate Change, and which represents the consensus of scientific findings in this regard, predicts that a doubling of TS for a, that, which predicts that a change of the surface temperature for a doubling of CO2 is about 3 Kelvin, as I mentioned earlier.